Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Burial, and today we're gonna for hopefully finish up this tutorial series. So, very exciting. So we ended up doing this um, shadow catcher on our plane and uh, we did a couple of different cool lights and everything. So one of the things I wanted to do to finish this up is to try and use the uh, V-Ray light mix um, function that we have as well and maybe talk a little bit about render setup because if I go to my render settings and go into the render elements I can add a V-Ray light mix. This V-Ray light mix we can actually change around if we want to. It, the only changes we need to think about is how it's grouping the lights and per default it's instant lights. It can also be individual, it can be group lights, layers and so on and that kind of means are two lights gonna be the same if I change them around. So if I um, if I have two light sources that are instanced with each other, I can only turn up and down from both of them at the same time. But if it's grouped by groups instead, I might want to have different kind of light sources, but I want to be able to control them all together. I can change that around in the V-Ray light mix. So this is what I mean by it. So if I go to my V-Ray VFB here and press Control L to have my layers on, and I can just do it by using the um, interactive viewer for now. I will actually have a light mix source here that I'm able to change stuff around in. So if I were to turn on and off our key light, for example, I can turn on and off our Sonos light. And <laughs> yeah, the naming, I didn't change the naming of all these lights, but it's probably fine. So now we can basically turn up and down for our lights you know, do subtle changes, even change the color. So if I, our key light for some reason needed to be purple or whatever, we can actually tint it in whatever direction. Also do note that if you do plan on using color tints, which can be really cool, you should make it a habit of already, always rendering your lights with uh, being pure white because you're tinting the color. If, I've, if I had rendered one of these lights as a blue light, it would be really hard for me to make this blue light a warm light instead because as soon as I would to, were to add some yellow to combat that blue, it would basically just get too white. So I would have a hard time actually making it warm in, uh, in any case if I wanted to. So anyway, um, one of the things we actually can try and do to maybe get a little bit more life into some of these reflections is that we could use a dome light as well. The V-Ray dome light is a light all the way around our scene. Um, but to help us with that dome light, we can use an HDRI. Um, so we can create, um, it's basically image-based lighting. An easy way to do this is to use the V-Ray Cosmos browser. And we can go into HDRI. We can even go to studio and look at all these kind of different kinds of studios. Um, or we can go to, you know, daylight, HDRIs, evening, and so on. All, all these are free to use. There are also a lot of, you know, cool models and so on. So, you know, we'll probably uh, have fun with that uh, a little bit later on in a different tutorial series. So for now, maybe I can use, go to studio, we can download this studio five. And as soon as it's downloaded, we can just go ahead and press import. And as soon as you've imported, you can actually just, uh, it'll appear here in the center with all the settings. You might need to turn it to be invisible if you want to. Um, we can change the multiplier around. It starts as one, we can go to 20. As soon as we do that, we can render our image. All right, so if we go here, you can see that the studio now renders. Um, so we can even change this a little bit around if we wanted to, to create a more cool light of sorts. So we can change the light source to be a, you know, give it a bit of color, maybe something like this. And now we have, you know, different kinds of lighting that'll help us if we took off, you know, all of them, except for the light source here, we can start creating, you know, Maybe this be a little bit less. We can create or not the highlight here if we want that or not. We can give this a little bit, maybe take out a bit of the color. So it just gets a you know, slightly blue tint. We can choose to have something on the edge here or not. We can use the key light or at least turn it down a little bit. So we get 
that kind. We can even check out the shadows and so on. So we get something really cool in the long run. Um, it's just a matter of playing a little bit around with it, using whatever's you know whatever we have, um, you know, at our disposal, and and just just getting whatever out of it. Um, to check it out with a different background. Actually, this is a little bit weird, but if we go to the uh, add layers or create layer, uh, we can use a background. <clears throat> we can find an image. And in this case, I found, you know, um, a white background or, or I've created a white background. You need to load an actual image. You can't load a, as far as I know, at least, you can't load a color, a solid color. So I just have these default lying around, you know, a gradient maybe or a black or a white just to you know, to, to look at how it actually looks. And, you know, it's a little bit flat, but we can actually fix that, that here in our um, frame buffer as well. We can add a filmic tone map. And even by default, uh, we can, you know, by the way, change the order of it so we don't affect our background. So with the filmic tone map, maybe add a little bit of shoulder strength, uh, take out a bit of the linear strength and the angle, Give it a little bit more to change the Y point just a little bit, maybe. Anyway, as soon as we do that, we have a pretty decent, you know, looking image. <clears throat> so yeah, you know, that's the basics of using V-Ray Light Mix to our benefit. Getting it on and off, using different, you know, the different kind of layers we have here um, and getting the results we kind of want to. So I hope this all helped you guys out. Um, one of the last things we can actually talk about, because I've just been using interactive rendering to make this a bit easier, um, but we haven't actually talked about rendering settings. And I know render, render settings is a big topic for a lot of you guys. Um, but since you know one of the earlier updates, I'm actually on update 1.1, which is actually the newest, so shame on me. Um, but if you go to your render settings, go to V-Ray, <coughs> um, one of the two main things about render settings in V-Ray is whether you're going to use, or at least in CPU rendering. Right now, we're just covering CPU. Uh, I will at some point cover uh, GPU as well. Um, but for now, we're just concentrating on CPU rendering. If we're going to use the image sampler bucket or progressive, if you're going to with bucket, your rendering will have all these buckets depending on how many um, different, uh, how many cores you have on your uh, computer, how many frets you have. Uh, the more frets, the more buckets will render, and they will all take, you know, their sweet time and, and all that. And, you know, in progressive, it looks a bit, a lot more like the interactive rendering where all of the image gets slightly less and less blurry, basically. Um, with the bucket rendering, we have a minimum and maximum subdiv. Um, the default settings on both of them, either bucket and progressive, is pretty good. It'll take a long time to render or a longer time than probably necessary for a lot of you guys. So going with something like an image bucket sampler, we can change our max subdivs to six instead of maybe 24. Uh, and that'll decrease the rendering time a lot, as you can see here. So it'll start rendering, no need for us to wait through all of it, but basically it'll go a lot faster than it did before. Or we can go to something like the progressive rendering and keep the max up there at 100, but we, then we can now introduce a rendering time. So we have a maximum rendering time and say this, I, I won't let this take more than a minute. Um, we could also um, determine the rendering time by using a noise, noise threshold if we wanted to. So increasing this value to maybe 0.02 instead of 0.01 would make it more noisy, but it'll take less time to render. Or, and decreasing it will take more time, but be less noisy. So you can you know, change a little bit around with these settings. I can go more in depth with all of this if you want to, but basically default settings is pretty good. Um, they're probably just gonna take a little bit longer than might be necessary for, uh, for a lot of you guys, at least in the beginning. GI and so on, leave it at brute force and light cache. It's the way, way easiest way to, to control all of this. Don't, you know, fool around with radiance map and so on. It's, it's old and it's outdated. You will get more settings uh, or more uh, better value out of using uh, brute force and light cache together. Um, that's my opinion, at least. So yeah, you know, 
that's the basics of render settings for now at least. If you want a more in-depth video, leave a comment down below. Yeah, that's it. I will see you later. Bye.